Hill, you have hundreds of protesters right now outside. They're protesting Judge Kavanaugh. They're demanding that senators vote no for the judge. All of this happening as senators from both parties review the FBI's report on Judge Kavanaugh. Joining me right now, we'll continue to watch these pictures a little bit here. We have former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and Trump re-election advisory board member Steve Rogers. We also have former FBI assistant director Chris Swecker, good to see you both. Steve, um, what ha I mean, how can they get through all of this in such a short amount of time? I'll start with that. Well, well it's, it's impossible. Look, the Democrats attempted to use the FBI as a weapon mm -hmm. to reach an end uh, or as a, as a weapon to reach an end that they just didn't get to. And that was to bring Judge Kavanaugh down. Mm -hmm. Look, the fact of the matter is the FBI did their job. They did it efficiently. Six, now seven investigations, background investigations. To put an end to this, a complete end to it, they're going to have to release that report. Let us all know what is in that report. Well, look, I, I, I would say if I were Judge Kavanaugh, I'd certainly want that report out there as much as humanly possible, if only to clear my name, if indeed what uh, we're being told is in the report would in fact clear him. But Chris, let me ask you this. I mean, the, the Democrats are, are critical right now because they're saying, look, you didn't even talk to either Dr. Ford or Judge Kavanaugh. Why would the FBI not do that? Well, it's either a fundamental misunderstanding of what an FBI special inquiry is designed to do, or they're playing politics with it. Take your pick. And maybe both. But these... these the FBI what they play politics? On, yeah, no, not, not the FBI. I'm talking about the uh, Democrats. Um, they, they focused in on... They laser focused in on the allegations involving sexual assault. Mm -hmm. They didn't go looking at uh, barroom arguments or drinking when he was in college or whether right. he was real drunk or just a little bit drunk or, you know, it's a, which is a matter of degree. They looked, they lasered in on the things that they needed to that were relevant to the allegations of sexual assault. So I can understand why they didn't go far afield in that. And, well, both of and, and we knew from the beginning that it would be a limited investigation, limited in its scope and limited in its time, uh, which, in fact, it was. But the Democrats are going to continue to say, Steve, and, and this is the political aspect of it, um, that the FBI was not doing its job thoroughly enough and that the White House prevented the FBI from doing its job the way it should have. But perhaps uh, some members of uh, the political left would only see it as mission accomplished as, you know, if somehow they were well, able well, to prove that well, Trish, he points. wasn't competent to be a uh, judge. Chris put it in perspective. This is not a criminal investigation. It's a background investigation. And the FBI was charged by the president of the United States, who, to his credit, gave them all the leeway they wanted mm -hmm. to go down the road they know they have to go down. And Chris put it in great, great terms. They went after the uh, uh, parts of the investigation that would look to corroborate what the uh, accusers have said. And it looks like at the end of the day, there's no cooperation, there's no evidence. And when in this country, Trish, do we declare a person guilty and not innocent? Oh, look, I mean, that's a big part of this. I, that, that's very troubling, um, it, you know, especially at a time right now, we're in the middle of the Me Too movement. And, you know, you heard her testimony and it, it was heartbreaking. It really was, it was heartbreaking. And we don't know what happened, but, it sounds like she entirely wasn't able to give us enough details about what happened. So I don't know how the FBI is able to investigate something, Chris, that was 36 years ago. If you don't know exactly where it happened, exactly uh, who all was there, the date, et cetera. I mean, that just seems like a rabbit hole from which you can't get out of. It is. It's a, it's a tough task for them. Um, I'm a former prosecutor, I was before I went in the FBI, and we prosecuted many types of cases like mm -hmm. this. And usually when someone's a victim of a traumatic event, they confide in someone, a friend. They may not go to the police and report it, I, and I get that completely. Mm -hmm. But if it's truly a traumatic event, they, there's mm -hmm. something contemporaneous, a note, a confidant, or so, something that lends credibility to the allegation. Now we've got 36, 36 years, years later, years she comes later, forward. Yeah. Hey, let me just yeah, ask you guys this. What about, and I know we're, we're going to go because we are waiting on uh, lawmakers on Capitol Hill that are going to make some comments on this. But Chris, let me just, or forgive me, Steve, let me ask you, he's being criticized for what they're saying is, is lying under oath. In other words, he didn't quite state his drinking issues um, perhaps as accurately as, as some thought he should have. Uh, and there were other examples, the yearbook where they thought maybe he was lying about that. 
Can any of that come back to haunt him? I don't believe it will. I believe he said the truth as he knew it. But Trish, there's one thing that needs to be said that hasn't been said. Women in this country, let this not uh, cause them to never report any sexual assaults. You know, uh, 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 I've been in law enforcement 38 years, a lot of legitimate uh, uh, issues out there with women. Let this not prevent them, hinder them from reporting sexual assaults. Well, I, I think, a, yeah, no, I, I hear you on that. And the moral of the story as well, perhaps some takeaway um, for women is that don't be afraid. Right. Get out there and report it right away and tell your loved ones and tell people. Yes. Um, because, you know, in this but case, don't go to a politician, go to the police. Don't go to a politician. Go to the police. That's probably some good advice. All right, Steve, Chris, thank you very much. Um, we are at session lows right now as we're off three.